Wow. <laughs> Just wow. Revealing. 2020 was exhausting. Chaotic. Patience. Transformative. Awakening. Unpredictable. Mm -hmm. Or Thanos. I would honestly describe it as eventful. Memorable. Crazy. Blindsiding. Confusing. Tiring. Surreal. The end. <laughs> That's a good answer too. The year too. ending. Definitely. I caught my first King Salmon this year and I was hype as shit about it. My favorite thing that happened this year was creating my YouTube channel. Oh, I loved our girls trip with all of our friends and we got to go up north to Empire, Jeremy's place. Just so much fun things happened there. Oh, going to California pre-COVID. Um, I went to go see my oldest brother in Los Angeles. So my friends and I, uh, Ben, Evan, and Sophie, we all went up to the UP and we did Pictured Rocks. We camped, which was a really fun time. I haven't camped since I was like 10. Um, so being able to do that with everyone was really fun. My favorite thing that happened this year was meeting my boyfriend, Sean. Getting really close with my dream friend group. I think I got a lot closer with my brother this year, which is very important to me. Me, Rain, and China and Bailey got closer and I got that like sister bond with them instead of them just being like my aunts and I think that's kind of cool. Favorite thing that happened was reconnecting with friends and family. Also, um, taking a lot of time to rededicate time to myself and just focus on becoming better. Being able to get the opportunity to get closer with people because with COVID you are forced to stay at home and you get very comfortable with those people because you're in their space 24 7 so it's been a blessing and a curse but that's my favorite thing i think my favorite thing that happened this year is that even though we knew that interpersonal relationships were at stake i think that with people not having a choice whether or not they have limited interactions and connections with people made them realize the importance of human relations even more and so no matter who you are and what side of the pole you're on or perspective you come from that was really ingrained in you probably electing a new president. Voting in my first presidential election. Uh, I'm stuck between two because I want to say Thanksgiving with my mom, but I guess it was when me and like the rest of our group went to like Mackinac. Like we were just traveling a bunch. So like that and just being able to pop around the country at my leisure has just been the favorite thing I've gotten to do. How to be patient because being locked up in your house for months not being able to go anywhere, do anything, definitely teaches you some semblance of patience, especially dealing with your family and mental processes that come along with being alone. <laughs> Amen to that. How to be my own soulmate and how to read tarot cards. I was really proud of that. I learned not to be so hard on myself about things, you know? Can't be hard on yourself in a pandemic. I learned how important it is to use teamwork, or, you know, to get people together to solve a problem. I learned that you can't do it on your own, that no matter who you are, you have a network of people around you that are affected by all your actions. The biggest thing I've learned this year is to take each day at a time because I've always, like, three steps ahead in my life and this year was kind of like oh no you can't plan ahead because nobody knows what's gonna happen the next day i learned that nothing is promised things that seem concrete like birthdays and holidays and school and the normalcy of them can be snatched away just like that um, i learned that there's a lot more important things to worry about there's just so many more important things that we should be focusing on and the things that we were focusing on just seem so trivial now. Probably that the things that we thought were most important aren't. So like work and school, like it's really not as important as we think. You know, spending time with the people we care about is definitely the most important because you never know when, you know, your time's gonna be over. I learned that no matter what the circumstance is, um, if you honestly just focus on the little things and be positive, you can make life the best no matter what. I feel like I learned how to be comfortable in my own skin to an extent, more than I ever have before. Because of quarantine, everyone was forced to deal with stuff that had been brushed under the rug to a point where it was almost like sink or swim mentally. I feel like I needed that. I feel like everyone needed that because when you hit a sort of rock bottom, the only place to go from there is up. I learned that being happy now is most important because I always used to tell myself like oh I'll be happy once I do this or I'll be happy once I achieve that but I realized that 
you need to be happy now and that doesn't mean you stop improving and growing and progressing it just means that you're okay with how you are but you know that you can grow and flourish and become better yes i think i just learned not to take for granted the times that we have with people and then also making sure to take time with family and friends when i have I learned that your friends are probably one of the most important things you have in life, especially in a time where you can't see them, who reaches out, who you're able to see if you're social distancing or whatever, like it's very important because those are really the people that you have other than your family, which they drive you crazy, but I think friends. I learned that I need to slow down sometimes. Prior to everything just shutting down and like I couldn't go anywhere and do anything, I was always trying to like get stuff done. I feel like it costed me a lot of my personal relationships. Being forced to like be stuck in my house made me like kind of know that like I needed to reach out more and do stuff like that. So like just reconnecting with people and like knowing when to take a break and just, you know, vibe with everybody. I'm trying to but barely. Um, just the way this year has gone, it seems like there's a lot more work to do and a lot less people willing to do it. I want to have hope for the future, but a lot of people are selfish. I do and I don't. Personally, I have hope for myself because I know I'm going to continue and become the best version of myself, but for the world, it's kind of going to shit right now. <laughs> it's hard to say, but I think if everybody keeps pushing and comes together and stops getting so divided and everything, I think that maybe we'd have hope. <laughs> I think so, yeah. I mean, sometimes I go back and forth with bad and the good because you watch the news, but I think I do. Uh, yeah, there's hope. I mean, if there wasn't hope, I feel like it would be a lot more depressing to like think about 2021, but you know, there's vaccines and just better things hopefully coming. For sure, for sure. I hope that just everyone can take something from this year and hopefully do better in the future, and hopefully that'll be a driving force. I do. I think that our generation has done a lot this year alone with like so many things, so I feel like each generation learns a little bit more, so generations to come are just going to be even better. Yes, immense amounts. Yeah, I have hope for the future. Um, I think, you know, despite whatever roadblocks we came across, I believe that people were made to overcome things like this and things worse than this. I do have hope for the future. I do. I'm nervous. I'm nervous, but I do have hope for the future. I feel like there's a lot to be afraid of because of politics and COVID and obviously the anxieties and anger that are caused by those things, but I feel like we all feel that tension. But I also feel a greater sense of passion and gratitude and love for the things that people care about. I feel like that and the people who are open-minded are going to rise above and against that fear instead of sinking into it. I have hope because of those people. Yes. America's been in so many downfalls and once you hit the bottom, there's only one way up, so. Of course. I think it's silly to think that there's not hope cliche and we don't like the author but um albus dumbledore once said happiness can be found in the darkest of times if you remember to turn on the light just because like with everything going on you need to be able to find those moments of happiness of those moments of joy just because if you don't like it's just going to consume you i do have hope for the future because without hope there's only fear and if you're fearful for the future then you can never really move forward and you can never expect great things so in order to expect great things and have great things happen, you have to have hope. So I do have hope for the future. I do. I think this year has been tough, but I think Biden getting in, praise the Lord, is going to be good for all of us in the future. Oh, for sure. Because, yeah, 2020 kind of sucked, but some good came from it. I've been seeing a lot of people being, like, doubtful of 2021. And I'm like, no, it could still, it could suck because, you know, things happen and you never know. And I'm not going to be like, oh, yeah, bro, 2021 is our year. But I'm like, yeah, I'm hopeful because it can only get better if we, like, are working for it. I have hope for the future. I like to think in my childlike mind that everything will just work out. But we also live in a world where things like this happen. So... Who knows? I guess we'll see in 2021.